everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'd like to do a review on the Arches Rough Press Watercolor Paper. Now if you saw my last haul video then you would have seen already that I did just haul this paper so it was brand new to me and I was so excited I couldn't wait to break into this. I have quite a bit of experience with the Arches brand of paper. They're pretty much the only brand of watercolor paper that I use exclusively at this point. Although, I also like the um, Strathmore 500 series. They're 100% cotton papers. Um, in their hot, their hot press is pretty good. But I have all three of the papers that Arches offers. I have the rough press, I have the cold press, as well as the hot press. So I'll be pulling from those experiences to offer comparisons but really quickly before we get started this is the autumn leaves that I painted a quick leaf study actually that I painted on this paper and I have a tutorial on my channel that will be coming up if not already uploaded by the time you see this so I will link it up if you're interested um, I'll link it up in the iCard in the description down below so if you'd like to learn how to paint these colorful autumn leaves in watercolor then go ahead and check that video out and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because I'd love to have you here on the channel um, and leave me some comments because it helps out my channel it helps to support the channel so without further ado let's go ahead and get right on into the review now like I said I have a lot of experience with Arches paper and their cold press is absolutely my favorite. I have an example of a butterfly here that I did um, recently and I'll link this video up to, um, in the iCards and down below if you're interested also. This one was very special to me. This was done on their cold press paper like I said which is my favorite watercolor paper so I was very eager to try the rough press. You can see probably from this example that the paper, the, their cold press, is a bit smoother than the rough press, but not that much, surprisingly. Now, Arches cold press paper, if you're familiar with it, tends to be far more textured, has a lot more tooth than the average cold press, certainly more than the Fabriano cold press. But... It allows you to get a lot of layers and a lot of glazes, which I really enjoy. So right here, I have some uh, demonstrations that I did uh, while I was testing out this paper. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys down in on this so we can take a look at it. All right, so I've zoomed you down in. And what I have here is a scrap of this paper. I took one sheet, I cut it in half, and I used half for my testing and then half for the painting of the autumn leaves. So I tested out several different common techniques that I like to use. On the left hand side, what I've done is I've swatched a few of my commonly used colors. And the first one is ultramarine blue. Now this was important to me because I wanted to see how the pigments would granulate on this paper. This is Daniel Smith's ultramarine blue. And Daniel Smith's ultramarine blue tends to be the most granulating of any ultramarine blue that I have. And I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest, on this paper that I didn't get as much of that sedimentary, very textured, granular effect that I'm accustomed to. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Here I have their sap green and their permanent alizarin crimson. The colors lay down very smoothly. The sizing in this paper is excellent and the colors are very vibrant. Over here I did some dry brushing and this is when I just took the side of the brush with very little pigment on it and I just very lightly grazed the surface texture to see what kind of effects that I could get. Not surprisingly I did get a nice texture and I could see this being very very usable in landscapes but I didn't necessarily think it is more texture than the cold press, but it's not heaps and bounds more texture. So a slight advantage, but not a ton. Here I went ahead and I saw what kind of fine lines that I could get on this paper, which rough press paper is not particularly apt to fine lines and details. But as you can see by the demonstration that I did, I was still able to get some very highly detailed and some fine lines there. 
So that was excellent. I've always thought that fine lines and details were really more about the skill of the hand than the texture of the substrate. Down here, I did a wet into wet wash. This was just wet, you know, regular plain water and my Daniel Smith watercolors, and they blended as I would have expected them to. Here I used gum arabic solution and a pretty heavy wash of gum arabic so that I could see what kind of effects that I would get. Very much what I would expect. This is useful technique in things like lakes and ponds. So I definitely wanted to test that on this paper because most likely in the future I'll be using this paper for landscapes. I think it's going to be the most... Um, the most user friendly for landscapes and things. So I wanted to test that and of course the dry brush technique. Up here I used some salt and I used coarse grind salt here in this patch because salt is a technique that I like as well salt is an effect that I like to get a lot especially in clouds, rocks, all of these techniques are things that I would use in um, a watercolor landscape. So I definitely wanted to test those abilities and it performed very well. In fact, I thought I got more texture and more of those fun blooms on this paper with the salt than with the cold press. So it did very well here. Up here I used the salt again, but this time I used gum arabic solution in the water. And what that does is because gum arabic slows the drying and controls the spread. Instead of getting these fun blooms and more of that rock texture, what happens is you get these really fine hair-like structures that start to form in the paint. So you can get two very different effects with salt depending on how you use it. Down here I used a wet into wet controlled gradient type of a wash and I've achieved that effect with gum arabic. So here is just the usual wet into wet where it did a lot of blooming and fun things and you know crazy blends but here because I was able to slow down the drying with the gum arabic I was able to get a very smooth gradient and that worked very well. And in this demonstration here I did some glazes. This yellow strip on this side is under the three colors and on this side it's over the three colors. Now I did several several glazes on the painting down below here and I did find that this paper accepted many layers and glazed very beautifully. Almost all of these techniques that I practice here I ended up using in my finished painting. Now you're probably asking yourself at this point rough pressed watercolor paper if since that's really mostly associated with landscapes, why didn't you do a landscape tutorial or a landscape so that we could see it on this paper? Well, the reason is because you've probably seen that dozens and dozens of times if you've been watching reviews for rough press paper, probably even this one. It's very predictable, it's very safe, and it's very easy. I wanted to show you just what kind of detail, realism, and fine lines. I wanted to challenge this paper so that you could really see what it was capable of in the more non-conventional sense. And as you can see, I was able to achieve fine lines, lots of glazes, beautiful rich jewel-like colors and I thought the paper performed very 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 well. The only thing that I was slightly disappointed with was that I honestly wish it had more texture, even rougher, extra rough would be nice because they're cold pressed paper and I've got, I've got that right under here. Their cold pressed paper is already pretty textured so yes this is a bump up from that but it's not drastically more texture. And I will show you a close up, not only of this painting, but of the texture on this paper compared to the cold press so you can really get an idea of just how much more rough this is. Honestly, it's not vastly more rough. I still found that I was able to achieve some sharp edges where I needed them, clean edges. It wasn't so rough that it was completely out of control, which is an advantage, absolutely, in certain instances. But when I purchased this paper, honestly, I was hoping for something that was really rough like what the old masters would have worked on. That's what I was thinking in my head. I was also somewhat disappointed by the fact that I was expecting granular pigments to really shine 
here with this paper. But sadly, I have to say, and I've tested this out on another scrap, that um, the granulation effect was diminished and was more subtle on this paper. I also find that to be true on the hot press paper because there's not any texture on that paper it lays down so smoothly that you really don't get any granulation at all on the hot press either. So if granulation is something that you really like you might not get enough of that here on this paper to be satisfied. All right, so at this point in the video, what I'd like to do is give the rundown of some of the pros and cons. I'd also like to talk about the price. So for the 11 by 14 size, you're gonna be paying about $20 on sale at Blick.com for 12 sheets. For a 100% cotton rag paper that is fully archival, I think that that's a pretty good deal. Honestly, that's pretty affordable for 100% cotton watercolor paper. You can find this paper at a lot of places. The cold press is available in almost every big box store. The hot press might be a little bit more difficult to find simply because it's not as common, it's not as popular. Um, but I do know that all of the big online retailers like Dick Blick and Jerry'sArtArama.com will have this paper. You can also buy full size sheets and then cut it down if you prefer so that you can really control the sizes if you like. And they have a variety of sizes in both the pad and the watercolor block. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. The pros and the advantages of this paper, I think, are that it has such a nice, lovely texture, really lends itself well to landscapes, looser, more expressive, impressionistic paintings, but it's not so textured that you can't get some realism with it either, but it will be a little bit more challenging. Another advantage of this paper is that the colors are very bold and saturated. Um, I thought that they really just laid down beautifully, uh, like I would expect from an Archer's paper. But I also felt like I could get the potential for even more layers, I think, on this paper. And the last advantage that I wanted to mention is that I felt that this paper stayed wet longer. Um, which makes sense because the hot press dries the quickest, the cold press is somewhere in between, and the rough press paper definitely stayed wet the longest, giving you the potential for more blends, more wet into wet type effects, more blooms if you like. So that really is an advantage right there. Some of the disadvantages of this paper I notice that because it is rougher, it was harder on my brushes. So in the demonstration that I did and the tutorial for these leaves, I used a brush that was more affordable and not as precious to me because I knew it was gonna wear down the tips or the points of my brushes much quicker. That may be a non-issue for you if you're using like a quill brush or something like that and you don't do any details or don't do a lot of fine details, I should say, in your work, then it might be a non-issue for you, especially for landscape painters, but it will be harder on your brushes. The granulation on this paper is diminished, it's lessened. So if you like a lot of granulation, you may have to end up using a granulation medium or something to get more of that effect. But um, I just noticed that it wasn't as granular as what I would have liked. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is that I noticed that this paper, when it's wet, when I laid down a wet wash and I started to drip in some color, and also on the swatch card, that I noticed a very uniform, pronounced uh, texture. It was like you could see the linear marks the linear strokes, the lines where the roller had run over the paper. So this surface does not appear to be as random as their cold press is. However, when the paint dried, that went away. So it was only when it was wet that I noticed those, those uniform linear lines, but when the paint dried, it seemed to go away completely. So for me, that made it a non-issue. Um, had it not gone, gone away though, it would have been a complete deal breaker because I cannot stand those linear lines on my paper. 
So that pretty much does wrap up today's watercolor paper review. Real quick before I let you go, I wanted to mention, and I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, that this paper, like all their others um, from the line, is 140 pounds, 300 GSM, just like their cold press and their hot press. Now, as I had already mentioned, I do currently own all three in the blocks. These are blocks, but I also have some of the pads, but they're the same paper inside. So if you were interested, let me know down below if you would like to see a review on the other papers or a video comparing and contrasting all three. So let me know and I would be more than happy to do that. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I'd love to have you here on the channel and leave me some comments because it helps me out. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.